Hi, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks, and we're building this 41-foot trawler yacht in the backyard of our upstate New York home. Now, she was designed with the home builder in mind, and once complete, she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. I got started with some neglected machine maintenance. I had a couple screws that were going to give me a problem, but we eventually got that worked out. Then I moved back into the boat shed to catch up on the planking that moves from the bow back to the transom so I could begin the process of working from the shear line down like we did in the last video. So these boards are from the last of the 18-footer lot that I had, and some of them are pretty funky, warped and curved, but like I've said before, we take what the wood gives us, and because it's a boat, there's no straight lines anyway, so we'll find a place in our planking to use these uh, heavily curved ones. If we were a woodworker, we'd be pretty upset, but for a boat, it's really no problem. And the stuff that we're rolling on here is just copper naphthenate, and you know how much good will it do? I don't know, but it's cheap, uh, it's easy to apply, and sometimes you know it's green or it's light green. This stuff is brown, which I've never seen before, but I actually prefer. And you know, will it give us a little bit of extra protection? Probably, but I just do it because the designer George Bueller in his book talked about using a ton of it. Those were back in the day before epoxy, but. Once I got to the aft end, I began working to the shear line down just like I did in the previous video. There were no surprises here, a few tapering cuts to make sure things fit nicely, and then I repeated the successful technique that I used on the starboard side by just laying a very wide board that I had been saving for many years in my private stock, secured it to the side of the boat with a few screws, then I went inside the boat to trace the pattern to get an accurate cut. This technique allowed me to essentially create a custom steeler that would even out the number of boards going forward so everything looks symmetrical in the forward section.
Now, of course, we're big supporters of our first responders, so if you're current or former police, fire, EMS, communications, the armed forces, any kind of public service job, and you want to have a patch from your agency represented on our Salute to Service wall, we would be honored to have it. Just send me an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com. I'll give you our address, and you can get that mailed out to us. Now one of the great beauties of building your own boat is that you can make changes to any part of the boat at any time and I have decided to make one of those changes in our engine room regarding our fiberglass epoxy plywood diesel tanks in the engine room. Now the designer's original plan was to have two saddle tanks each with about 340-330 gallons of capacity. However, that took up a great deal of wall space in the engine room. And you have to remember that George Bueller, who designed these lines of diesel ducts, was a bit of an old school. He fancied himself with this type of boat having oil lamps and limited amenities, and that's not really how we want to cruise. I want to have room in the engine room for various components like air conditioning, fuel polishing, a hot water system, all the things that you would expect in your home, I want to have on the boat. 
And with those large tanks as they were originally designed, I really didn't have the space. So I decided to reduce the size of the main tanks to about 175 gallons. Now combine that with our day tanks that we had fabricated, and instead of having about 630 or 640 gallons of capacity, we have about 500 gallons of capacity. So that changes our range from you know over 3,000 miles in perfect conditions to about 2,000, which honestly I believe will work out fine because as much as I like to dream about crossing the ocean, I'll probably only be voyaging around the Loop, the Eastern Coast, Having the ability to go to Bermuda or the U.S. Virgin Islands or the Bahamas, that's all still well within reach. And if we ever expand our horizons and really want to go far, we can add fuel bladders on deck that we can burn up on the first part of our voyage to extend our range. So with a few unusually warm days in November that would be good for epoxy work, I decided to take a break from planking and move into the engine room to make these changes. I used some door skin material to create templates so I could cut the panels that we made up previously to fit perfectly. And then it was just a matter of using a traditional 5 to 1 epoxy from Total Boat and some Thixo pre-thickened epoxy to install them. And as time and temperature permits, we'll move on to the other panels doing the same process. Then it was back to planking, which involved milling up some more stock so we could continue on with the process. And just like we did on the starboard side, there's just some careful measurements, the use of battens to get correct curves so things look fair and fit nicely, and on I proceeded.
things are coming together. We just have one more steeler to install, so a couple of uh, careful measurements, and that should go in no problem. And with this piece in, we'll have everything planked from the shear line down, from the transom all the way to the forward bulkhead. Now, I'm having to make more cuts, more tapering cuts for the steelers than I thought I was going to have to, but I guess that's just the way it goes. Um, it's not really a big issue. It just takes a little bit more time, but so far, things are looking really nice. Now, next time, I want to get started on the raised shear portion of the boat that we talked about that's found in the aft section of the boat. And I have some 16-footers. I have several that I want to use because I want to have a clear, uninterrupted span on that raised shear portion because it's going to be visible from the inside, and I don't want any butt blocks or anything that's going to hinder how it's going to look. So I'm going to be careful about what I harvest out of my remaining uh, long pieces of white oak. I want to use my quarter sawn ones and the straight grain ones so that it looks nice and pretty from the inside of the boat. But other than that, we're going to keep plugging on and once these steelers are in position, we should be able to start flying forward with a few more steelers and get these sides planked up. Now we hope folks will go check out the description in this video where you'll find a link and a discount code that you can use over at Jamestown Distributors. Jamestown's been a big supporter of ours, and we hope that our viewers will help support companies that support the Sea Dreamer Project. If you're interested in helping support the project, we hope you'll go check out our merchandise store. Christmas is coming, and what better way to say that you love the sea or boats than with a nice Sea Dreamer Project diesel duck t-shirt or mug. Any help is appreciated, so we hope you'll go check that out. But your job is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.